Good evening. Uh, thank you, Q, for tuning in. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our uh, language core. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the rela relationship between H and S. Okay. And today, I'm not. I have a lot of slides. I don't have time to go to the normal thing. You know, I just want to stress that this is a research that I have been doing for the last twenty something years, and then I want to present a female point of view. And as a traveler, not as an academic, so you will see that I look at things and I look at languages and I hear sounds very different from the linguistics. Okay, but the linguist, I mean. Okay, let me start today's show. Okay. Um, again, I stress on the fact that uh, we do not read, or maybe I should say we read differently. <clears throat> because for the last hundred years or so, you know, uh, the modern education is set up by a lot of men. You know, all, most of the academic at the early ages are men. So a lot of, uh, we are actually being uh, de-educated, you know, to read life itself. So uh, I'm going to present something very different, you know, from what you understand as, as uh, linguistic today okay so um, uh, I should say some linguistic theory and use a loop to divide humanity because I believe that uh, our human language share as my program's name you know share a common core and it's like a basket starfish rather than like a tree and grammar has never been important until uh, the, the modern days because you know when I was a child you know my even my grandmother speak very differently from mine grammar wise and also sound wise so uh, but we were speaking the same language you know just within my own lifetime so uh, I think we pay too much attention on grammar again I want to show you the image of a basket starfish as you can see uh, we all share one common core all of us, uh, us are just uh, branches we are not uh, separate family trees okay and no language is actually really isolated because we have been communicating with each other since ancient time and um, this is images that I found in the internet you know this is how languages has come to be the linguistic studies come to be now which I really think that it is not necessarily so uh, because human language you know cannot be just mathem mathematic formulas because how can and you are uh, when I use a verb very different from the you use a verb how can we use a mathematic formula to to summarize the whole thing language is very human and it carries all the thoughts and the tenacity of human sentiments so um, we can never build you know a formulas you know using uh, language as numbers because there's nothing constant over there one is not never as one you know for everybody two is never the same for everybody so this is uh, very very different from what I view the language world and the other thing is that uh, the basic uh, linguistic theory now uh, based on a lot of the what they call the Indo-European language and then uh, this are uh, it's uh, I myself you know feel a lot of arrogance you know it's as if you know uh, the way the Asian see languages is uh, not worthwhile to be considered so I really think that uh, we really need another pair of eyes to see the same problem from a different angle because language has to be lived not read and a lot of the time when I lived in very remote places communication do not even need a sound you know so how do we summarize this language in those mathematical uh, linguistic theories I don't know um, first of all I want to show you some uh, language uh, images uh, I learned to read life you know in a very different way this is a picture I took in the uh, capital of Yemen uh, a city called Sanaa and as you can see this is a road running through the old city itself and uh, when I arrived there it is a very strange thing amongst all those very narrow twisted street this is one of the main thoroughfares fair you know went through the old, the old city and the name was very interesting it's called Sila and somehow you know I keep wanting to understand what that means you know I all the impression I got is just 
it has closely related to water itself. And then at the beginning, I couldn't understand why a road, you know, can be related to water. And uh, anyway, I understood it, you know, using my Cantonese sound, you know, and 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 because sai in Cantonese is actually something to do with water and washing. Okay, so not until uh, uh, one summer that I really saw what's going on with this big road, why it's built this way through the old city and why it is called Sila. This is a picture of it, you know, in a country where you don't normally see rainfall, but on that year, you know, all of a sudden, you know, a lot of rain, you know, poured down and that road actually turned into a river itself. And, and I was amused, you know, but at that time I heard people saying things differently. The words that I normally hear, Sila, Sila, actually all of a sudden changed to this seal, you know, everybody was using this word and I was still chasing after you know why they change all of a sudden the same row but they change the sound of the word until I um, finally you know look up a Chinese dictionary and this is what the uh, row was like you know when it's uh, overflowed and you see you know people actually know that it's coming even though you know uh, rainfall is not very seldom and in a country where river is non-existent you will see how happy the people were when they especially children when they saw the river flowing through the city like that and um, amazingly no casualty nothing because they knew nature they know what's going to happen when rain falls you know in an, an abundance okay so and you can even see cars sometimes, you know, run along with the river and nothing. I never heard anything bad happen. And then I, it's all of a sudden, I look into the Chinese dictionary. Uh, this is the Chinese word sai, written in Cantonese, okay? It is washing something. You see the animal, uh, obviously, you know, in the, in the age when people were normal, we were still herding animals. You, you will see that they brought the animal to a river to wash. And an and interesting there is a Chinese word siu sounds exactly like the Arabic siu and then I was amazed you know because at that time finally I understand the Chinese why the Chinese word carry this water part as a child and as a grown up I never understood why this word has a water part until I look at this then I look deeper into the word siu in Cantonese uh, which actually brought me to the same explanation as the siu in Arabic it actually means means the melting of water uh, of ice and um, which means a torrent and a flash flood okay and and this is very interesting because it seems that uh, the Cantonese sound you know actually goes side by side with the Arabic word so uh, as you know you know we were always told that they are these are two different families of languages so why are we so identical in that if not we were already share you know very ancient roots during ancient time and then when I lived in this I, use, I actually use my ear to hear a lot of the sound and I use my Cantonese, you know, uh, senses to understand them. Believe it or not, a lot of the time I actually, um, as long as it is very short words, you know, if I ignore all the grammar, actually I was able to understand it in very, very short form. And this actually uh, amused me and it actually makes me uh, to go deeper into this ori origin of the shared sound, okay? So I also want to show uh, the uh, modern world, you know, people that, you know, how we understand things differently. Living in remote places with very uh, backward, uh, I would say less developed culture, you actually uh, learn to understand things in a very different way. I see things in a very different way. This is a uh, basket uh, I actually found in the internet. You know, this is a basket that I actually still use as a child when I played, you know, uh, fish catching when I try to catch fish and interestingly this was used by the Native American to catch fish too but I use it why because in the internet it has a different angle the people use it because they were trying to sell it but I want to use this angle to show you that in a lot of places I see the same object but really depends on how you put it they were all called by a different name because you can actually use the same object for different uses so uh, there's no um, 
this uh, something uh, very interesting that sometimes a sieve can be a basket, can be a basin, can be a container. You can also refer it as a head or helmet or ha uh, armor. So you can use it to protect your head, you know, depending how you use it. So all these words are actually connected. And I read in the Chinese dictionary, there's actually a lot of connection like this going on. If you look at uh, the Chinese dictionary with a more than pair of eye, you will do. Will, you will not be able to understand why certain words are connected. But if you live in a very very uh, um, remote part of the world, you can understand why these things are connected. And of course, uh, nouns like this, the verb can also be changed. You know, if it's a basket, you can use it to select or to cleanse or as a sieve to wash things in the river. Or if you use it as a hat or helmet, it actually used to. Uh, to protect as a verb and also you know because it's uh, something to do with protection and also because you use it to catch your fish and also connected to the kill to the verb kill okay so um, so as far as as far-fetched as you think they are they are actually connected then I want to show you a picture you know I was very amused when I was there because every Friday on the day uh, when people go to the mosque, because this is a country where everyone is Muslim. So uh, it's actually very interesting when everyone actually worship even in the open air because the mosques are not big enough to, to uh, have everybody inside. So you will see very interesting view. This is really serious thing. You can see that this person, you know, he's sitting in a very serious uh, worshipping ritual. What's on his head is actually a pot, a pen okay so you cannot laugh because it is actually very serious you know they were really worshiping and you understand from this people you learn from this people every single object can be multi-purpose and and of course, you know, I will show you the same thing, you know, you can use it to cook something as a pot, but when you turn it around, it really become a head itself. But uh, this is actually uh, how uh, human civilization developed as well. Of course, nowadays you live in a very civilized world, everything is made for one single purpose. But uh, as I said, you know, even when I was living in Yemen, I learned to, that, you know, anything has many, many purposes. So then um, I want to draw your attention to a helmet itself you know as I, I compare this to the basket from the very earliest material to the invention of metal and then to uh, really you know when war started when we started to fight for resources and so on you will see that uh, the um, helmet itself you know uh, it's, it's, it's made in this way but in Cantonese I was always amazed when I look into the dictionary when I try to find you know a word you know uh, the sound is actually dull right there and it actually means something wrong or a vessel or it can in the ancient dictionary it actually means a helmet so I could never understand why a vessel is shared with the helmet then I look more and more and then I look uh, into a hat you know a hat is like that and then the helmet is like that and then I look into a lot of their explanation they actually go forward and backward in the ancient Chinese dictionary and then for some reason it actually explained it as a cooking power pot you know interesting enough but you can see the writing this is a writing this is not the picture okay and the writing itself it really turned it upside down it's obviously when this soldier were marching to war at the time you know when they are resting when they were cooking they were really turn the thing upside down it really become a cooking pot and so all these words were related since ancient times and then I keep looking more and more and the sound you know pun you know with the head and it actually pun with you know things that I never even expected and I'll show you some picture yes that actually tells me that in ancient China they actually started the falcon tree they actually started you know to train falcons for hunting as well and of course you know this actually extended to a lot of different meanings but it actually takes made a uh, link the world of ancient China to the world that I was in in Yemen because these were the picture I took in Yemen when they were training their 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 falcon you know to hunt for them so you see how interesting these were when you look into ancient dictionary as long as they were written in pictorial form you can actually get a lot of information from there rather than the alphabet 
okay and and those are the pictures that i want to show you how different i look at language itself so again you know i want to show you pictures of basket starfish and i want to tell you that the keys of words are like entangled threads this is exactly the same metaphor the ancient used very direct metaphor so you will see that the thread is a very important human invention as i already talked about it last time uh last week i mean so um the the thread actually came into uh, our speech a lot because it was the technology that we uh, kept you know dominating since thousands of years ago and a lot of the th uh, threat metaphor were already built in in our languages so I, I will be I will continue this week again with the interchanging between the H and the S sound and the form okay so um, uh, again I bring now the English word hang which is the thread the rope and uh, I will show you you know why it's so uh, connected to all these words that you know sin and sim this you can understand it's a Greek origin the sin and sim to group things together this sim is actually in Chinese but you can also understand it as sim okay the sam is also you can understand as Chinese at three and but you can also understand as, as, as assemblage to uh, put something together and this is same you know the English word same and you can understand also as a Chinese psalm uh, meaning three it's uh, the ancient habit to put three together three of the same kind will always become the same thing and when you join three together become a symphony and you when you synchronize everything it actually goes back to the rope to the thread itself it's all connected to the earliest formation of the thread okay now I will show you all the earliest writing connected to this this is the ancient Hebrew H you know you can see it's very clearly a rope itself and uh, the S and Z as I said uh, last time you know uh, the weavers until this day they will know that in order to make a stronger thread you know you need uh, a single S trail thread which is go one direction and the Z trail thread which goes the other direction one is clockwise the other is anti-clockwise then you trail them together this is a stronger uh, a rope right there you know you can call it a hang which you use it to to as the verb hang things okay and this is the very beginning of the human civilization and the Chinese has this sin sin or sim okay and there is another writing uh, because it's too confusing if we keep calling the same thing so there's another uh, reading is called dan in Chinese you know other than sin and sim it all means uh, the one and single uh, thing when you join two things into one okay and the Chinese word sin is actually a tiny little thread and then we have a word Cantonese and Cantonese sim as the word goes on sim actually is what you know as the Zen in Buddhism you know this is exactly the English translation of of Chinese sim and it is in Buddhism so uh, what is it in religion you know I will show you another religion actually this is the Islamic one branch of the Islamic Sufism uh, this is a Samar ritual the Samar ritual you will see that all the people worshiping God they will keep spinning around in the in the act of uniting with God so you will see that both the Samar in the Sufism in Muslim and also in the Zen Buddhism we were both talking about how to be one with the God so you will see that this the word sound is used religiously but it all goes to the very original idea of the the, the twirling of the thread into one okay Okay, so that's why in ancient uh, Hebrew you will also see this, you know, as a samak. Uh, they call it samak, and this is an S sound. You will see that this is actually the exo joining the three thing. And uh, from this, I take you to the Greek. You see all the sigma, the S sound. They were all trailing and, and going around, uh, showing you the thread. And then, and also the k sound, you will see very clearly uh, the k uh, Alphabet is always used to, to show the word axle or to show words with uh, trailing and making of thread and even the and also the word 
X in English, X. Can you hear that? It's actually everything to do with the axle and the trilling itself. And no wonder the ancient Greeks still have it like this. The ancient Greek is very similar to the ancient Hebrew. They all understood it as the axle of the sky, you know, when you join the, the earth with the sky. And then uh, until later, you know, this is the modern Greeks uh, symbol and they only they actually took the axle away because they no longer understand the ancient meaning okay so but you can go back to the hieroglyph they still have this trilling act you know as the sin and sim and I all keep showing you this the modern um, ribbon of uh, unity and this is a symbol of symphony and synergy you know so you still wear those when you Thing that you agree with in ideology, all right? When you go out and march, you always wear whatever color those ribbons are. And this is a Chinese word. And in this case, other than the two truth, uh, two ply thread, this will become a three uh, ply thread. You know, um, a metaphor. So we have the same. Uh, the sound is psalm or charm. Okay. And as you can see, and another Chinese word we. We call it Tai, Tai or Sai. Okay, so uh, it's actually very, very close to the Greek Sin, Sai, Sim, you know. So the word uh, developed into this writing, as you can see, the later Chinese actually add a very, very uh, Western H right there to show that it is to do with homogenized something. You see, the H right there is very similar to this H right there. And then, of course, you know, even in English, sometimes you call it sin, sometimes you call it sim, sometimes you can pronounce it as, as sing something together. So it's the same uh, writing. So why do you know that it's sing, sin, sim? Okay, so you also, uh, uh, according to context, you also change the reading itself. This is something built into your brain, which is which doesn't need explanation. So um, this side is, is homogenized something you use the same metaphor and sink into something you also use the same metaphor so these words are used to prove that this is uh, closely related related to H the hot in Hebrew is actually a line a thread and a wire and the are hot is to uh, the word one or of course one is to unite something together okay and that's why to assimilate you have the sim this is the core of all the words right so when you see assimilate this is where the Zen is to assimilate with God, and then the Sama is also assimilate with God. So they are used by two different religions, but uh, you can also understand it in your English word, okay? So again, this uh, I actually showed this already last week. I will show it again, and this is Sumerian. You will see that uh, I put more stress in the S word. Ugaritic even is cuneiform. You under, you start to understand when you see all these pictures together. Either they call, uh, they carry the S sound or the sin or sim. Okay, so every single language family would you call, you know, so you can actually start to call them uh, language branches. They are not family tree. Okay, this is old uh, Hungarian, but it start to change the J sound and I will ex explain to you later. This is a uh, ancient Hebrew this is linear B you see they will have all this trailing uh, symbol and then um, the Sanskrit already use a different way of writing but you can see the sa the sa for the Sanskrit is uh, the same meaning as with you know just like the sin in Greek and I will show you this you know because this shows you you know the queen you know shows his royal blood is sinking with the whole lineage of her family so that's why all the royal family in Europe wear that and then uh, the the Latin still hold it as sister and sorrow and this is still holding the matrilinear line okay and then also uh, the two thread and the three thread you will see most of the world's three still use that you will see that the Ugaritic put three and then you your writing three actually comes the Arabic writing three and then the Arabic writing three also comes from the Arabic S writing itself so everything has its origin everything has its link together okay and then the Hebrew also you can count the three and this is a Chinese three and we pronounce it the psalm okay so uh, this is how we read 
rewrite plural, and then this is uh, this is a sound zap, okay, zap and jam, and we you can see this the sum chum jap. This is already beginning to mutate into that, and this is the hieroglyph writing of plural. Can you see they are almost identical between the hieroglyph and the Chinese writing? Um, if they don't have communication, I don't know why they were so similar. So this is again the Chinese writing we call sum and charm and and that's why your English word has a jam and so basically it goes back to this so the mutation you know the whole human being mutate at the same time so either you have this harm or some or the jam they all in the whole world the mean grouping okay so I will uh, give it to you and force that to you again, you know, so either it's harm, some, or charm, or jam. And I show you these are the Chinese writing, and this is Arabic writing. This is closely related to the bird. If you want, you can go back to uh, the one of the episodes when I talk about the bird, you know, how it uh, pronounced, how it created J and the G writing. You can uh, look at that episode. Um, but then this week, I want to show you, you know, why the Bible has these two tribes. I mean, three people uh, keep coming up. This Sam and Ham and then Japheth, because it all to do with the grouping the herding and it is a time when the people were mostly uh, concerned with you know multiplying themselves so the the Bible itself is uh, speaking a lot of the multiplication of the people and then only because you know when the gem also is closely related to the yoke when you yoke things together it's uh, that's why it's Yosef and then the yoke you know, the Jaffa is uh, actually a Yaffa Okay, so the I and J is also interchanged at a certain time. So, um, okay, I will stop right here. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, I have to go so fast. Again, please go back, you know, type in the YouTube, find the episode again and watch it again. I hope you can follow me. And uh, I want to show you why, you know, the making of thread is closely connected with human civilization. And I want to see that, you know, human transformation is